Even though it was daytime, the room this little girl was staying in was extremely dark. Her name is AI, and she is being locked up by her mother. Currently, AI is extremely hungry when an Ayakashi appears to give her food. Time passes quickly, AI gradually grows up, and she also realizes that she is different from ordinary people and that she sees things that they cannot see. There are many types of Ayakashi that are dangerous, but there are also kind types. That day, on the road filled with cherry blossoms, AI saw an Ayakashi sitting in front of the temple gate. She wanted to ignore that Ayakashi and leave, but the Ayakashi said he was hungry. AI couldn't let that Ayakashi go hungry and harm humans, so she gave him her lunch box. He praised it as delicious and called her name. AI also didn't care and left. Because of this ability to see Ayakashi, she was estranged and abandoned by her mother. The person who took her out of the orphanage was her grandfather. Not long after, her grandfather passed away and left her enough money to live on. The next day, when she passed by the place where she met the Ayakashi yesterday, she saw a needle and a lunch box. She thought it was a return gift, so she opened it. But she didn't expect that she was transported to another world as soon as she opened it. That Ayakashi appeared and called her his bride. Ai woke up and saw many Ayakashi around. She was very confused and didn't understand why she was called a bride. The people around him called this Ayakashi master and discouraged him from marrying a lowly human. Ai immediately ran outside and was surprised to see a strange scene before her eyes. There are even boats flying in the sky. Audana told her that this place was the realm where the Ayakashi lived and that he was Audana, the owner of this Tenjin building. Ai suddenly remembered that she once saw a photo of her grandfather taken in a boarding house called Tenjin. He added that he was her grandfather's friend and also her husband. Her grandfather had come here to visit Tenjin before and owed a large amount of money. Because her grandfather had no money to pay, he signed a contract to let his niece marry Audana. Seeing that she was still very stubborn, Audana sent someone to take her to torture. Ai thought it would be very painful, but they took her to take a relaxing bath. Then Audana came to ask her if she had thought it over. Ai still firmly refused. Audana said the Ayakashi who love to eat humans have strong spirits because they are delicious. Ai wanted to know about the amount of money her grandfather owed. It was up to 100 million yen. She promised to work to pay off her debt. Audana found this impossible. If she wanted to work, he wouldn't protect her like his bride. If any Ayakashi attacks her, it has nothing to do with him. Ai was scared and couldn't say anything more. That night, while sleeping, she remembered her kind grandfather from the past and shed tears. She doesn't know why her grandfather sold her. She was very hungry when there was a noise outside. It turned out to be a nine-tailed fox boy. The boy secretly brought food to Audana without letting Audana know. He introduced himself as Jinji. He was one of the Ayakashi present in the room just now. He has the ability to transform, so he took on a childish form so as not to scare her. Jinji said Audana is a great boss and is respected by his employees. Audana is one of the strongest Ayakashi in this realm. Even so, AI will not marry him but will work to pay off her debt. So the next morning, she went everywhere to apply for a job. First is the room service job, but the girl named Oreo seems to hate her, so she doesn't want to hire her. In jobs such as cashier counter and bathroom service, no one hired her. Ai sadly walked for a while and saw an arrow pointing the way ahead. More and more arrows point to a mysterious looking room. Once inside, the scene here is completely different from the outside and looks very elegant. She entered a small restaurant and saw Jinji there. He is in his usual adult form. Jinji shared that this place is about to close because this area is a very unlucky place. No matter what type of product you sell or how hard you try to attract customers, you will always fail. Just as he was cleaning up some leftover food, AI offered to make something to return the favor. Jinji was very interested in Japanese egg rice rolls, so AI also responded to the request to make a similar dish. As soon as she ate, Jinji commented that it was delicious, then he made a serious face and asked her if she wanted to work at this restaurant. AI was a bit startled, but she refused, saying she couldn't do it. Jinji wanted her to think again, so he let her stay here. Currently, AI is also very hesitant and cooks a lot of food to relieve pressure. She felt that if she didn't reopen the restaurant, no job would accept her now. When she went outside, she heard a loud noise. The scene was extremely chaotic, as the chef was in a battle with the Tengu. AI asked a waitress and learned that the Tengu had complained about their food. While he was drunk, he threw the food away, making the chef very angry. The Tengu are the top diners of this tension, and the head of the Tengu is an influential Ayakashi with the same rank as Audana. At this time, Audana arrived and frightened the waitress into a weasel form. 
AI was dumbfounded and was thrown things because she met their master without kneeling down. Aunt Anna also said bitterly that she was a human who couldn't do anything here, coldly telling her to leave or he would eat her. AI was both angry and frustrated and ran back to the restaurant. While I was very sad, there was a loud noise outside. She went out to look and saw an old Tengu man lying on the ground, so she helped him inside. A while later, the old man woke up and asked where this was. AI had prepared some dishes for him. The old man ate and praised endlessly. He then asked her name and was surprised to learn that her last name was Subaki. The old man laughed loudly and said he knew her grandfather very well, then introduced himself as Matsuba. He said that he was bored with the food here at Tenjin and complimented her on how delicious the food she made was. He saw that she was very similar to her grandfather, from temperament to spiritual energy. Shiru is a person who used his strength to reach the underworld, and there are many Ayakashi who love him. Matsuba still owed him a favor. It was one day, when he was drunk, that he fell into the lake. In an extremely dangerous situation, Shiru rushed to save him. At that time, Shiru was fishing in a forbidden river. Because Matsuba didn't bring anything with him at that time, he promised Shiru a Tengu heirloom fan. But Shiru forgot that promise and didn't come to get it. At that time, Shiru was a free person. Matsuba then asked about Shiru's current situation. AI also sadly said that her grandfather passed away when he slipped and hit his head on the ground. Matsuba then said goodbye and left. The next morning, while AI was deep in thought, Jinji rushed over. Without a word, he pulled her away. There were many people waiting outside. Audana asked her if she had fed an old man food last night. She was worried that Matsuba would have a stomachache or something when Matsuba appeared and happily held her hand. Ayakashi next to him said that last night, to apologize to the Tengu for the fight, Audana held a drinking party on the flying yacht. But while drinking, Matsuba, the leader of the Tengu, slipped and fell to the ground. Thanks to Aoi's care, he is okay now. Matsuba took out a leaf and gave it to her. Everyone around them gasped in surprise and Aoi didn't understand anything. But looking at their reactions, she also knew it was very valuable. This is the family heirloom fan he was talking about last night. Matsuba had also heard that she stayed to repay Shiru's debt. He suggested that she go to work at Shuman, the Tengu's residence. He would pay off all the debt and promise to let her marry one of her sons. This is an extremely good condition that everyone wants. Jinji goes to tell Matsuba that AI is Audana's fiancé. Matsuba didn't care at all because they called AI his fiancé, but treated her very badly. He asked AI her decision and she refused because Shiru was her grandfather, so she wanted to settle this debt herself. Matsuba tells Audana to take care of AI. Even though his relationship with Shiru wasn't good before, don't blame AI. When everyone was gone, waitress Kasuga complimented AI very well. She helped Tenjin maintain his relationship with the Tengu. AI didn't hesitate any longer and ran to Audana to ask him to let her reopen the restaurant. Seeing her eyes, he pulled her onto the flying boat, telling her that being a chef for Ayakashi was not an easy task. But you should try it. On the yacht, Audana said that in this underworld, there is a capital located in the center and surrounding it are eight islands. Each island is governed by its own powerful people. Matsuba is also one of those people. He wanted to thank AI for helping Tenjin, so Audana let his servant help her with makeup and clothes. He even personally chose outfits for her, making the serving girls admire her very much. The three girls discussed that manager Oreo would be very jealous of AI if she knew this because Oreo liked Audana very much, and even told everyone that she was Tenjin's owner. Audana complimented her on how beautiful she was in this outfit, making her a bit shy. He took out a brooch and gave it to her. Outside, AI was extremely surprised by the beautiful scene before her eyes. This place is Yudo, the capital of the underworld. As soon as they got off the yacht, many people recognized Audana and came to say hello. Before going inside, he told her to always wear a mask, or else she would be discovered as human and eaten. Inside the city, the two of them visited many different shops. AI was very interested in the bowl here, so Audana offered to give it to her. She refused because she didn't want to owe him more. Then the two went to a hot pot restaurant. AI was curious when she didn't see him eating. Audana told her he would only eat humans or their intestines, which made her lose interest. At this time, an extremely beautiful girl came. She is Suzurin, a famous beautiful artist in the capital. She is also the younger sister of Akatsuki who is the reception manager. AI couldn't believe her eyes because the two of them had completely different temperaments. Upon learning that AI was Shiru's nephew, Suzurin was very happy and asked about him. 
She was about to say that her grandfather had passed away when Audana interrupted her and told him not to come here with her, then asked to listen to her play. Suzerain also did not disappoint the two of them and played extremely beautiful music. Listening to the sound of the piano made Aoi's mood extremely good. Audana took her out to eat sweets, but on the way, she felt like an Ayakashi was following her. She accidentally bumped into a passerby, causing the brooch to fall out. After picking it up again, I was startled to not see Audana anywhere. She looked around but slipped because the ground was frozen. A gust of snow blew, causing Aoi's mask to fall off. At this moment, many Ayakashi realized she was human and came forward to eat her. In panic, Aoi flicked the fan and blew them all away. She put the mask back on and saw a suspicious person on the other side. Without thinking much, she chased after him and fell over. Unexpectedly, it was Oreo. She turned the ground into ice, causing her to fall and then blow off her mask. While the two were arguing, they saw Suzerain being chased by a group of people. Aoi pulled her hand away and hid in a dark tree. Suzerain confided that the group of people earlier were servants of the Yahata family. A kimono trading family has power in this place. Suzerain was sold by that artist's house to Yahata's master for a large sum of money. This is a dangerous matter when that young man is a bad guy who used to cause trouble and tension. Audana appeared from nowhere and heard the whole story. He led Suzerain to the flying ship. Just as I was about to go upstairs, the Yahata family's servants were waiting here. He let Suzerin get on the boat first. The son of the Yahata family also arrived. He did not show any respect to Audana and demanded that Suzerin be handed over. Audana could not accept this and said that Suzerin did not like him at all, so it would be selfish to force her to marry him. The young man of the Yahata family was angry and sent someone to shoot fire arrows. The incoming arrows were caught by him. The second wave of arrows rushed towards Aoi without hesitating to use the fan to blow them all away. The young man's subordinates trembled, not knowing who she was and had the Tengu's treasure. Audana solemnly introduced herself as Shiru's niece and also his fiancée. Hearing this, the young man was scared when Shiru's descendants married a demon god. Audana smiled, hugged Aoi, and jumped on the flying boat. Returning to Tenjin, Suzurin and Akatsuki have a tearful reunion. Oreo was scolded by Audana. He ordered her to look after Tenji, but she didn't listen to him. He stripped her of her management position, causing Oreo to collapse. A while later, when Aoi was at the restaurant, Kasuga carried Oreo over. Oreo fainted while working due to fever, and most people in Tenjin hated Oreo, so Kasuga couldn't ask them to take care of her. She asked Aoi to take care of Oreo and then return to work. Aoi reads a book about Ayakashi and learns that snow ladies are susceptible to fever when near fire. Maybe it was due to the fire arrows from the Yahata family's subordinates. According to the book, the snow girls must be fed cold foods like ice cream. But there were very few ingredients here, so she modified it to make tofu ice cream. But even though AI placed ice cream in front of Oreo, Oreo's self-esteem was very high, and she was determined not to eat it. AI didn't say anything more but left the ice cream there and went out. After she went to Oreo to try the ice cream, it was so delicious that she ate it all in an instant. Aoi asked if she wanted another flavor of ice cream. This time, Oreo did not refuse anymore. When the two of them talk to each other, Aoi learns that Oreo has many enemies because of becoming a manager. That was because she wanted to be recognized by Audana. He only liked people with great ambitions and helped them achieve it. Thanks to Audana, she is where she is today. Oreo was born into a poor family in the north. Because she had no money, she had to go to town early to work as a servant for a rich family. For a country girl like her, she is always bullied by her boss. One day, she and her hostess went to Tenjin to give a gift, but unfortunately, she broke a precious plate. As a result, the boss continued to beat her, and Audana appeared to save her life. Everyone in Tenjin, like her, was saved by Audana. To be recognized by Audana, Oreo tried very hard to climb to her current position. But now Audana no longer pays attention to her, and that is when Aoi was brought here as Audana's fiance. Aoi heard the story and was not angry at all. While she was upset, she saw a parcel sent to her. Inside was the bowl that Audana planned to give her on their outing. Aoi immediately made a bowl of ice cream and brought it to Suzerain. But as soon as she arrived, she saw Suzerain having a battle with her brother. They transformed into their true forms and rushed into each other, causing chaos around everything. Akatsuki is determined not to let Suzerain go to the human world to find Shiru, even though she knows he is dead. The two of them fought, creating an impact that caused Aoi to fall over. Akatsuki was thrown out by his sister. That night, Aoi went to Audana's place and asked him why Suzurin and Akatsuki were in conflict with each other. Audana said 40 years ago, when Shiru was traveling between the positive world and the underworld, 
Akatsuki is a spider who was hiding in the human world with his sister when Shiru wandered by. Akatsuki, in order to protect her sister, rushed out to fight and was punched by Shiru as a result. When Shiru entered the temple, he saw Suzuran, who was extremely scared. He then took them to the underworld and asked out Anna to take care of them. Unlike Akatsuki, who hates Shiru, Suzuran feels indebted to him and gradually falls in love with him. She became an artist so she could play for Shiru. It had been about 10 years since they last saw each other, and she had worked hard to save money to return to the human world. The next morning, Ai woke up and checked Oreo's body temperature, and she saw that her fever was gone. She went outside to breathe fresh air and was immediately startled because Akatsuki was lying here. Despite his warnings, Ai carried him into the house. She also threatened to fry him, making Akatsuki tremble and not dare to say a word. She then bandaged his wound. Oreo also woke up, talked like the two were very close, and asked Ai to cook her something. After finishing the bowl of food in a few minutes, she lazily returned to her room to sleep. That day, Ai brought ice cream to Suzuran and was thanked for taking care of Akatsuki. Suzuran talked about her life before meeting Shiru. Her entire family was killed by humans, so she and Akatsuki fled everywhere to find a safe place to live. On a snowy day, Shiru entered their lives. First, he defeated Akatsuki, a powerful Ayakashi. Then he didn't kill them but also cooked a sumptuous meal of dumplings. At first, Akatsuki did not trust humans at all, so he was very careful with Shiru. He let two stay here with the task of cleaning the house. Over time, the relationship between the three of them gradually improved, and Akatsuki was no longer wary of Shiru. Until one day, Shiru took the two of them to the underworld and asked out Anna to take care of them. Suzuran then begins to learn how to play musical instruments to serve Shiru every time he goes to the underworld. But after that, he no longer came to the underworld, which was the time when Shiru took care of Ai. When Suzuran learned that he was with his niece, she was not sad but happy that he was no longer alone. Ai returns home, and her mood seems bad. She tells Akatsuki that Suzuran is going to the human world and tells him to do something to cheer her up. Akatsuki and Ai plan to cook a dish for her. Ai instructs Akatsuki to make dumplings. After a lot of difficulty, he managed to make dumplings that tasted just like in the past. He tells Ai to bring them to Suzuran, but not to tell her that he made them. Suzuran took a bite and immediately felt the taste of the past. Looking at the dumplings, she guessed that her brother had made them because left-handed people's folds would be very different. The next morning, Suzuran prepares to leave the underworld. The son of the Yahata family came to Tenjin, demanding to take Suzuran away. While he was screaming loudly, Akatsuki rushed forward and kicked him away. Odana gave Ai a mission. He gave her the command card to help move between the two worlds, wanting her to take Suzuran to Shiru's tomb. Oreo also came to give Ai some things to the human world. Yahada's family was extremely angry, and the butler used artillery to aim at the carriage. Akatsuki did not hesitate to rush out to block that cannon. Akatsuki transformed into spider form without any harm. This is also his farewell to Suzuran. The two then went to the human world. Suzuran sat next to Shiru's grave and played his favorite song. Today is the day AI's restaurant begins to decorate for its grand opening. They were given the three words Moonflower by Matsuba as the name of the restaurant. She had everyone at Tenjin come to help so she could finish quickly. While everyone was resting for lunch, Audana suddenly arrived. Seeing that, AI brought a portion of rice balls for him to enjoy. They did not know that. From afar, three strange guys were silently watching them. That night, when AI was about to close the door, she saw a lot of banana peels in front of her. That was thrown out by three guys with brazen faces, wanting her to step on them. Unexpectedly, AI suddenly appeared behind them, startling them and transforming into their real form. Before she could say anything, they said her food would never be better than their chef's food. AI also gradually understood that they were people from the kitchen area. They were jealous because, on opening day, she would hold a party for the Tengu. After that, they all ran away, leaving her to clean up a pile of banana peels. While AI was picking up banana peels, there was a figure behind her swinging a sword to slash at her. Luckily, she was saved by a mysterious person. He blocked the assassin's sword and told her to escape to a safe place. Thanks to his agile body, he dodged all the darts and slashed the assassin. The assassin wanted to release power from his mouth but was seen by AI. She tried to rush to help, but fell and accidentally blew the two of them away with the fan. The assassin released a hidden weapon, injuring the boy, and then ran away. 
The boy introduces himself as Taichai, one of Tenji's guards. They also do the cleaning and security work here. A moment later, AI bandaged him and asked if he wanted anything to eat. Taichai was very excited and agreed immediately. In the past, when Shiru was still young, he and Taichai used to go around causing trouble and watching women bathe. AI didn't understand how her grandfather could teach children such things. That evening, the opening party was held. Matsuba and many Tengu came to celebrate. They all enthusiastically ate and drank freely all night. By morning, Matsuba was still drunk and didn't want to go home. They thought everything would be fine, but a whole week passed without a single customer. Jinji hurriedly ran to announce that they were being called to the finance department. The person they will face is Bayakuya, the head of the accounting department. He announced that Moonflower would be closed because it was not bringing in any income for Tenjin. That night, Oreo came to ask AI a favor to make a box lunch for a guest. That person is a famous writer who writes in his diary every day. Recently, his work hasn't been going well, so he refuses to eat. If AI's food can conquer him, she will be highly appreciated by everyone. The next day, a masked Ayakashi arrives at Moonflower. The person who took off his mask was a weasel. It turns out that this is the writer Oreo mentioned. He came to return the lunchbox and thanked her because it was delicious. AI noticed the mask and found it very similar to the assassin's mask. The writer said he bought it from the southern island and offered to give it to her. He asked about her name, and as soon as he learned that her last name was Tsubaki, he was suddenly startled. He describes Shiru as an archetypal villain in his books as a dark knight. The inspiration in his body kept flowing, and he said goodbye to go home to write the script. The next day, AI and Jinji plan to make a sweet that is not available in the underworld. Jinji was very impressed with an ice cream dish he ate in the human world before that was made from red beans. AI relied on available red beans and made a red bean ice cream. Suddenly, from outside the door, a guest came. The girl said she smelled red beans and wanted to eat it with an expressionless face. AI took out some for her. As soon as she ate it, she praised it for being delicious and asked if this taste didn't exist in the underworld. AI did not hide anything but shared that she was a human being captured here by demons. To thank the girl, she took out her ball and gave it to AI. AI's eyes momentarily became lifeless as she received the ball. By the time she returned to normal, the girl had also disappeared. When Jinji returned, she told him about what happened. Jinji guessed it was Yashiki, a god who fulfills wishes for prosperous business. In the days that followed, so many guests came in droves that they didn't have time to cook. That's thanks to the writer's article praising Moonflower's food is delicious. Bayakuya also cancelled the order to close Moonflower. He also had good news, the wife of a royal family, who was also human, wanted to have AI cook food for their wedding anniversary. Knowing it was a human, AI happily accepted. On the way to collect ingredients, she wondered what the girl named Ritsuko liked to eat. Furthermore, why did she marry someone from the underworld? She wanted to go ask Bayakuya's opinion but didn't dare. Suddenly, AI heard the sounds of cats. She approached and saw Bayakuya playing happily with the cats here. She didn't expect that Bayakuya, who was usually very strict, had this cute side. Bayakuya is extremely scared and thinks that AI will use this information to blackmail him like Shiru did before. But AI just wanted to ask him about the couple who invited her to cook. When Akatsuki came for breakfast, he was a bit startled to see Bayakuya here. Getting to the point, Bayakuya told her about the royal couple. A long time ago, the couple met in the human world and secretly dated at western-style restaurants. AI thinks of a way to cook for the party by making western-style food to help them remember past memories. But she was also very hesitant about where to find the ingredients. Jinji told her not to worry. In the foreign food market on the eastern island, there were many different types of food, including food from the human world. AI was very happy and decided to go there. She then went to ask Audana for permission to go there. Audana wanted to go with her, but tomorrow he had to attend the Hakairo conference in the capital. That conference was a meeting of the eight Ayakashi who managed the eight islands. It is so important that he cannot be absent. He doesn't want her to go because she was in danger of her life last time. In order to convince him, she prepared a lunchbox to bribe him. Finally, Audana took out a necklace and put it on her. On the bracelet was a stone containing his demon fire and told her to always stay close to Jinji. The conversation was very normal when suddenly it thundered, the lights in the room turned off, and memories of when she was a child locked in a dark room made AI tremble and grab out Anna's shirt. Her necklace was shining. He comforted her, saying that it would no longer be scary. That was just like the Ayakashi had told her before. The next day, AI woke up and saw the lunchbox that Audana brought. He is currently on his way to the conference with Bayakuya. AI and Jinji also went to the East Island. 
The atmosphere here is extremely busy, different from other islands. AI was excited to see that they also sold cookies and chocolate, but needed to buy the right ingredients for the party. Jinji wanted to buy curry powder because he knew she liked it very much. The two of them then bought enough ingredients. While eating, Aoi saw Yashiki's figure in the distance. She smiled and ran away. Aoi's legs couldn't control herself, so she ran after her. Yashiki then appeared behind her and told her to go to sleep. When Aoi woke up, she found herself locked in a cellar. She tried to call for help when there was a scream saying she would have to stay here for two days until the couple's wedding anniversary passed. Ai was scared and burst into tears. The obsession of being locked in a dark room as a child made her faint. When Ai woke up, the sky was thundering outside. Because it rained, water flooded into the cellar. She realized this was a frozen warehouse, so the temperature was extremely low. The necklace that Audana gave Ai glowed and warmed her. She tried to push the door, but it was locked from the outside. The rainwater kept pouring in. While Ai was extremely desperate, Audana appeared and pulled her up. She woke up again and saw Oreo and Kasuga taking care of her. She learned that it was now noon the next day. Aoi is extremely worried and needs to prepare a meal for the wedding anniversary. Kasuga said that after Audana heard about the situation from Jinji, he skipped the important conference and went to the eastern island to save her. Kasuga added that the people who locked her in the warehouse were three Ayakashi from the kitchen. Then the chef appeared to apologize. Even though they were wrong, they still did it because of him, so he wanted to give up his position as head chef. AI disagrees. She reasoned that she still hadn't eaten Tenjin's full menu, so he couldn't rest like that. Audana burst out laughing when he heard that silly reason, but he still agreed with AI's solution. He told AI to rest, but she still wanted to cook for the couple's wedding anniversary. There are now only four hours left until the two of them arrive. Time was too tight, she couldn't stew the beef. The chef said she could use beef from his kitchen. Aoi happily sent three Ayakashi to get the ingredients. Then she started cooking. As soon as the cooking finished, it was time for the couple to arrive. The couple entered the separately prepared room and were very impressed by this beautiful decoration. Aoi brought up a dish with madon sauce. Ritsuko and her husband were surprised and did not expect this to exist here. The last time they ate was when they were still in the human world during the war. Next, she brought up the restaurant's special dishes. Ai was very happy when the couple ate happily, but because her body was very tired, she fainted while cooking. At night, Audana was always by her side to take care of her, and Jinji kept apologizing for not paying attention to Ai's health. He said the couple left very satisfied with Aoi's dishes. Audana doubted whether the incident of Aoi being locked up was caused only by the three Ayakashi, or if there was someone else. Jinji felt that some magic forced Aoi to run away. It could have been caused by a powerful Ayakashi. Audana guessed that the person was related to the rival in Orioya. Aoi's fever then disappeared. She was startled and wondered if Ritsuko and her husband liked the food she made or not. After knowing everything, she felt very reassured. While cooking, Ai recounted that when she was on the East Island, she seemed to be seduced by the blonde Yashiki. Jinji was a bit surprised because yellow Yashiki rarely appeared. The next morning, everyone said that Audana was going to the human world to do some work. Ai's mood is very good today because she will be treated as a VIP guest by Tenjian. Most importantly, it's free. At night, Ai followed the waiters in from the main gate. Everyone welcomed her very enthusiastically. This time, Ai meets a new employee named Chayaki, a distant relative of Kasuga. Ai went to the hot bath and realized she didn't bring her hair tie. The girl named Shizuna gave her a hair tie. Shizuna is a staff member who takes care of customers' baths. While Ai was bathing, Shizuna dropped oranges into the water. Next, she used her ability to spread the scent from them. By the way, Shizuna apologized to Ai for rejecting Ai last time when she came to apply for a job. Ai didn't feel bothered about that at all. When she returned to the room, she found Audana sitting inside. Audana said that he was about to go to the human world now. He gave her a contact card. As long as she writes words on it, the words will be transferred to his place. When she sent him off, she promised that when he returned, she would cook his favorite dish. Employee Chayaki rushed over to inform them that they had two guests from the Orioya Inn. This guy's name is Hattori, and he expressed his annoyance when there was no more room at Tenjin. Takihiko told Hattori to calm down because we didn't book a room in advance. Akatsuki openly hated this guy, so he ignored him and left. Jinji came to ease the tense atmosphere and was immediately despised by Hattori for betraying Orioya. Kasuga said that Jinji previously worked at Orioya, but then transferred to Tenjin. Ai saw that this was not a big deal, so she proactively gave her room to the two of them. She will sleep at Moonflower. Hattori wanted to ask something about Shizuna but hesitated. 
Jinji tells Ai that Hattori is the receptionist at Oryoya Inn, and Takehiko is the bathroom manager there. Later, when Ai was bringing food to the customers, she saw Takehiko touching Shizuna. Takehiko asked Ai not to interfere in their affairs. Before he could finish speaking, Shizuna used an extremely strong force to knock him down. Shizuna shares that Takehiko is a strong Ayakashi, and is also the teacher who taught and took care of her. He wants her to return to Orioya, but she doesn't want to because she still owes out Anna's favor. Takihiko is a good person but is always overprotective. Shizuna was born into a poor family on the South Island. One time, Takihiko happened to go there and recognized Shizuka's talent, so he brought her home to teach her. Originally, the two people's relationship was very good. Until one time, because she wanted to help him find a new source for Orioya, she went deep into the forest. As expected, she found it, but when she got inside, there was something dangerous there. When it lunged to attack her, Takihiko rushed to protect her, injuring his eye. The fire burning on the scar was due to his power slowly leaking out. Takihiko is an important employee of Orioya, so when he was weak, they suffered heavy losses. Shizuna was the cause of everything, so she was fired. While she was wandering, Audana appeared and took her back to Tenjin. Aoi then returned Shizuna the hair tie she borrowed. This was the first gift that Takehiko gave Shizuna. Aoi wondered how to make Shizuna and her master get along like before. The next day, Aoi started cooking a pot of tomato sauce, which both Shizuna and Takehiko liked. She discovered Orioya Inn's dog, Nobunaga, secretly eating cookies. Takehiko came to look for the dog. She was quite curious, wondering why Orioya's people called it Nabu Senpai. According to Jinji, it is the mascot of the Orioya Inn, which has been working for a long time since the Orioya Inn was first established. When Ai took the food away, she saw Takehiko advising Shizuna to return. The result is still the same as last time. Takehiko thought that Shizuna hated him and burst into tears. Ai saw that he was holding a hair tie for Shizuna in his hand. This is the item that Shizuna left behind before leaving. He wanted to pay it back but couldn't. Knowing Ai was very close to Shizuna, he asked her to give it to her. Ai knew that if she gave it to Shizuna, their relationship would definitely end. While talking with Jinji, Ai thinks that Shizuna wants to return to Orioya, but she feels guilty for what she did to her sensei. Ai came up with a way to help the two reconnect. She went to Takihiko and invited him to dinner at her restaurant. When Takihiko was about to refuse, Hattori interrupted to agree. She then went to see Shizuna and comforted her. She told Shizuna to face Takihiko and not run away like that. While Ai was cooking tomatoes with Shizuna, Takihiko arrived as promised. The two of them seemed shy when they saw each other, but Shizuna honestly said that she wanted to cook with Takihiko. Seeing an opportunity, Ai went to talk to Takihiko. Then the two of them cooked together. While eating together, Shizuna said that she would return to Orioya when she became more useful. Takihiko also agreed with Shizuna's decision. After everyone left, Hattori entered the restaurant from the roof. Just in time, Ai was testing a new curry recipe. Hattori immediately ordered one. He realized this was the reason his father always praised her cooking skills. It turns out that Hattori is Matsuba's third son. Currently, he has been kicked out of the family because he had a big argument with his father. He found her very similar to her grandfather. It turns out that Hattori used to be a very close friend of Shiru. Thanks to Shiru's reputation, Tenjin's business is very prosperous. That's why Orioya's master hates him so much. They were talking when Akatsuki came and, without a word, knocked Hattori down. Akatsuki tells Hattori not to flirt with Audana's fiancé. Hattori calmly teased Akatsuki and told him that, as a receptionist, he should smile happily and not frown like that. As soon as Hattori left, Akatsuki asked Ai why she welcomed Tenjin's opponent. Ai didn't care because anyone who came into the restaurant was her guest. 